Philly Philly and welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm so excited to share some of my Jersey roots and I'm going to be sharing with you an iconic sandwich from the Garden State and that is a pork roll and egg sandwich and I'm going to be doing it two ways. This is a sandwich that you might find um, at the diners which are throughout the state and very um, uh, iconic, not to overuse that word, but iconic to the state, to the Garden State, to New Jersey. And um, we'll talk about a little bit more about diners later, but this sandwich is absolutely delicious and I'm really excited to make it a couple, two, in two different versions for you. And plus, what better to go with a great egg sandwich than some absolutely delicious home fries, homemade home fries. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So welcome to my stream and I hope you enjoy learning something new if you've never tried any of um, the pork roll sandwiches before. And of course, as with any kind of food, there's so many different things you could substitute to make this your own with the ingredients you have on hand. So I'm happy to have be with you this morning and I hope you enjoy the stream. So let me see here. All right, so everything's a go. So a little bit about me. I know you know me as Philly Philly, but before I was Philly Philly, I was a Jersey girl. And I was born in New Jersey and uh, spent most of my life there. And one of the things I always remember were seeing the diners throughout the state. And a diner is a place that usually, um, not always, but usually is open 24 hours. And of course, you can get breakfast any of those 24 hours. But what I think makes diners super special is not so much their breakfast foods while they are delicious. What makes it special is you can get just about anything at a diner. And depending upon who owns the diner, they bring a lot of the, their um, family's cuisines to you. So for instance, you might have uh, a diner that's owned by someone who's Greek, and so you'll see some Greek specialties. So you truly can get just about anything. They're also known for great pastries, great baked goods, just so many different things. And many of the diners also have liquor licenses, so you could get a good cocktail there as well. So they're really, I think what makes a diner so special in New Jersey is how they encompass just about everything in one place. And honestly, as someone that, you know, likes to cook and has been cooking for really all of my life since I started as, as a young girl, I think that I am most impressed with the breadth of their menu. The menus at diners are huge. I mean, because again, you can really get anything. So it's amazing when you read through the menus thinking, how does that kitchen really handle all those things? And it's just, it's kind of, um, it's amazing. It's almost like a magic feat. So in any event, one of my favorite things to have at diners are breakfast. And one thing that we've mentioned before when I made some Philly bennies, which were eggs benedict with uh, pork roll, some people call it tail or ham in Jersey. Some people call it pork roll. It depends upon where in New Jersey you live. But that um, is going to be the star in our egg sandwich. And the next ingredient that's going to be very important is American cheese. And as you can see, the American cheese here is white. Uh, in across the states, you can get yellow or white. But in the East Coast, uh, it's most often white that you see. And we'll talk a little bit about that later because that really messed me up as a child. <laughs> And then um, we've got eggs. So the two different ways I'm gonna be making my sandwiches are one I'm gonna make um, with, let me bring it here, a Kaiser roll, which is probably more typical of what you would see. A Kaiser roll is a round roll um, that has, I think it's semolina maybe, that's kind of uh, a texture at, the top um, and it has this pattern. I don't know if you can see the pattern of kind of, it's like a star almost in there. And that is a Kaiser roll. And then the other roll that you see sometimes is a brioche roll. Now I don't have a brioche roll with me today, but I've talked about these amazing rolls that I get here in the city um, from Merzbacher's and these are their potato rolls. And honestly, I feel like their potato rolls are very similar to a brioche roll. and even ordinary potato rolls have a sweetness to them that to me kind of makes them a good substitute. So those are the two uh, breads parts that'll be on each of my sandwiches. And then the other way I'm gonna be making them different is on one of, they're both gonna have pork roll. 
uh, and both going to have American cheese. But on one, I'm going to be making a scrambled egg, um, kind of almost like an omelet that is going to go as the egg portion. And on the other one, I'm going to be doing fried eggs. On each, there'll be two. So the one is going to be much more messy, but um, both will be equally delicious. And of course, if you wanted to kind of bring the best of both worlds, you could always do one of the eggs kind of folded like an omelet and one of the eggs um, as a fried egg. So truly, you can do whichever you want. But that's what we're going to be doing today. But the first thing that's really important to do is get these home fries going. Because to make a good home fry, it's important to let it sit a while in the pan and develop that crust. So um, what I grew up with, because my um, mom used to make home fries all the time, and I think my dad even made them sometimes too. And frankly, in our family, you know, there was lots of home fry making. I remember going on vacation in the Outer Banks, and one of my aunts would make home fries as well. I just feel like growing up, everyone made home fries. So um, one of the things my mom would always do is whenever she would bake a potato, and we had baked potatoes, you know, I would say often as a side dish, she would always bake extra. And then that, what was so great about that is on the weekend is they uh, would make home fries. So these I baked, I actually baked them in the air fryer to use less energy. And these are the potatoes we'll be using for, for our home fries today. So they're already done. I did take them, this isn't necessary, I took them out of the fridge a little bit early just so they wouldn't be as cold to help speed up the, you know, kind of the process. And I like having, uh, with my home fries, onions. I don't actually remember if, if my folks used onions in their home fries, but certainly now I do like having some onion with it. Uh, but of course, if you didn't care for that, you could just leave that out. So I'm going to get this onion going and I'm going to get my uh, potatoes cut and then I'm going to get them in the pan. So when you're thinking about home fries, you know, there's a couple different things you can do, make decisions you can make. One of them is regarding how you cut your potatoes and frankly, how you cut your onion. So for me, I'm going to be cutting my potatoes and my onions, not in, I wouldn't say my onions are in cubes, but I'm just kind of cutting them here, one second, so that they kind of make little rectangles or squares. You could cut your onions, you know, more. I just want to make sure all this comes apart so I don't have any chunks. You could cut them smaller. You could cut them in strips. It's really however you want. I want my onions to all be about the same size, but it's kind of like a bigger dice, so to speak. And there's also definitely different ways of making sure, or how you're cooking the onion in home fries. With some people, um, they might cut, they might actually cook the onions first and then take them out and add them later so they don't get too brown. But for Hubs and I, we actually really like a brown onion. Um, so I prefer them to cook together because I, I like when those onions get crispy. I think that's very tasty. So that is definitely what my, I'm going to do. Now, growing up, um, my family sliced the potatoes. That's how they would go in the pan. But I find, and that's delicious, but what I find is easier to cook is just to cube them because if you, part of what makes home fries delicious is getting that crispy um, part, at least one side that's super crispy on each of your potatoes. And so when you are doing them flat, it's harder for them all to get that surface area of the pan and get really, really yummy. So speaking of pan, I am actually going to be heating up my pan so it can get going. And I will be transferring after I'm through cutting, I'm gonna transfer the camera back there so you can all see the stove better since we are still awaiting getting my whole second screen figured out. Um, hopefully this summer we can get that figured out. But in the meantime, we have some fixes. And I see that Matthew is on. Um, welcome to the stream, Matthew. And he says, I eat pork or cheeseburger egg rolls with wonton soup. Oh, that sounds delicious. Did you have that today? Or did you have that this weekend? Yeah, Hubs is testing out the cheese to make sure it, it tastes good. How well, is it? I, I will let you know. Will you let me know? All right, so I'm just gonna cube this. Um, I'm just going to cut them into quarters. Good cheese. That's a good cheese. And then I'm just going to kind of dice it. One of the things I love about home fries um, is the skin. And I love how the skin, you can see even here, it kind of gets all flappy and that can get all super crisp. Oh, forgot to turn on the pan. Let me get that turned on. Now, the other thing, um, if you talk with people that do home fries is kind of what fat are you using? 
So one of the things um, that's great to use because it has a higher smoke point is oil, but I do like the butter flavor. So I'm gonna be using a combination of both, both butter and a canola oil. You could use really whatever oil you like, but to me with the heat that these are gonna be on, any flavor from the olive oil is gonna get lost, so I'm just gonna use a canola oil. But certainly you could do as you wish. Now growing up, I believe it was all butter that my folks used when they made home fries. But, um, but I, do like, um, I do like the flexibility that using uh, a higher smoke point oil gives you. Matthew, do you like home fries? Is that something you enjoy? I know for me, it's such a great treat. A year ago at Lover's Egg Roll Restaurant at Plano, Texas. What a cool name of a restaurant. I love that. That's very cool. Oh my goodness. Catherine, welcome to the stream. I don't start work till one, so I finally get to watch live. Well, welcome. I am sharing an iconic New Jersey um, dish today. So it's going to be a uh, very homey, and it's gonna be a pork roll and egg sandwich, two different ways with American cheese, and I'm getting my home fries started. And by the way, I don't know if you all noticed, but I'm wearing a Long Beach Island t-shirt. So I grew up with my folks going to day trips to Long Beach Island. We'd go there for the day, and that's kind of like, that was my life, you know, getting to know the beach and swimming and getting pounded by the ocean at times, but that was something I did as a little girl. So I, I wanted to make sure I, I brought that to the stream. So I'm gonna go put some butter and oil in the pan, and I think actually I'm gonna move my camera so that we can get a better shot of the um, stove. So, oh, so you all might get a little bit dizzy now, sorry for that. Okay, I'm gonna get this right here. There we go, let me see. Sorry for that, sorry for the motion sickness. So that way you can all see the stove. Um, there we go. And I'm gonna move this so that I can see the chat. So I'll put this down here so that I can kind of see what's going on. Oh, hello, good to see you, is um, Shannon. Shannon, it's great to see you, thanks for Thanks for coming on stream and um, yes, I'm glad you joined us. This is gonna be yummy. So I was just getting my, my pan heated up. I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. I'm gonna grab my canola oil and we're gonna get this oil heated so we can get these home fries going. So hubs. Yes. Are you excited for the sandwich? I am very excited for yes. the sandwich. Neither one of us have eaten anything today and so it's 11 o'clock, we are quite hungry. All right, so I'm gonna just drizzle some oil in here as a home cook, you can decide how little or a lot of oil you want to use. And I also want to get some butter in there for flavor. There we go. Get this going. Excellent. So I'm anxious to hear how everyone likes to do their home fries. Because one of the things I love about dishes like that is it becomes very personal, right? Everyone does it according to their tastes and what their family enjoys. In fact, one of the things that I'm gonna be getting right out is one of the spices I'm gonna be using, and that is smoked paprika. So growing up, I believe my folks used regular paprika, um, and salt and pepper it was really pretty simple. I don't remember there being any really fancy seasonings. It was really about the butter and getting them crisp. Um, I'm also gonna be adding some garlic powder to it, and salt and pepper, of course. So keeping it simple, but I will say, because I've made home fries through the year, sometimes I will just add regular paprika. I haven't done smoked paprika really in a long time because I haven't made home fries in a long time. I will use smoked paprika on roasted potatoes, which is something I usually do just a little easier. They don't have to be baked ahead of time. Um, let me get the potatoes in the pan. So do you think people know um, the history? Of uh, diners, no. And first of all, I don't even know if everyone knows about the diners. I mentioned it a little at the beginning. Would you be able to share some of the history of the New Jersey diner? Well, yeah, there's, there's a lot of good diners everywhere, but the New Jersey diner... But New Jersey started. That's, I guess, what I, I was I think wondering. so. I think that... So they originally came from, like, lunch wagons. And, okay. Um, you know, way, way back in the late 1800s. And mm -hmm. then I know there were... Um, those kind of morphed into, into diners through the... I think it was the early 1900s. And I know that... I think the first... One of the first ones was made out of... Um, Union City, New Jersey, which was up north. Okay. And um, and then it just kind of, you know, they went from the lunch wagons and then the the kind of the free 
fabricated buildings that with a lot of stainless steel. You turned on your volume, by the way. Yes, okay, I, did. I see it's on, I did. good. So, so yeah, but there's, and, and you know, there, there's a lot in New Jersey, obviously, but there's also a fair amount in the, in the Northeast. Um, I mean, Philly has some, some great, some really, really great diners, but um, yeah. And they're, you know, kind of the, the greasy spoons and- They are. You know, as they're known, and, and a lot of them are 24 hours where you can get so we were talking about that, yeah. Order. And I was talking okay. also about how in diners you can like literally get almost anything. Like yeah. the like menus something. are just huge. Yeah, they're just and you just wonder how how they how can they I don't know how the kitchen handles that. that. But, By the um, way, just to catch great. you Yes, and thank you for doing that, sweetie. One of the things I just wanted to catch everyone up on is so as you can see when I added my potatoes and onions, um, I did I gave it a quick toss. You don't have to toss your pan if you're not comfortable with that. You can just use, you know, utensil. I wanted to kind of get the fat all over everything, but now I'm gonna not touch it. Now I want it to just sit because I really want that brown, that crispy um, side to develop. And then um, I will kind of turn them every so often to kind of help that brown on all sides. I did turn it up just a little bit. Um, I'm just slightly above medium because I just wanna start getting that process. And so one of the things I do when I'm cooking home fries is I kind of just keep an eye on the heat based on the speed of how everything's browning and crisping up. And of course, you know, I can change that um, as I'm going. I put my onions in with my potatoes because I want them to cook with them the whole time. I'm not gonna do all my season, the rest of my seasoning yet. I just did salt and pepper because I don't want these, uh, the spices of smoked paprika and the garlic powder to burn. And so I'm gonna get some browning. So I'm gonna add the spices a little bit later. Um, but one of the other variations I've done, because we've had home fries as a side with a lot of different dishes, especially when the kids were younger, and I did not add onions when the kids were younger because they did not like that. But um, is I would add thyme sometimes with the uh, paprika or just thyme by itself, which adds like a nice flavor. I think thyme and potatoes go really well together. But I would love to know like what some spices and variations y'all do when you're doing home fries. And if you are cubed shred or slice i would love to know that did you see that Catherine said she's a east coast girl oh, Lan lancaster county yes wonderful it is all home food and you know what i'm feeling that today for sure feeling like some home food so what's your favorite diner and uh, wait real quick see, and i love the excellent i love the puns i love the play in words so um our favorite diner, well, I don't remember what my favorite diner was as a child. I must, I don't, I don't really recall that. But I will say our favorite diner that we'd go to with the kids was, um, and I'm forgetting the name, it was on Route 73. Sage. The Sage Diner. And one of the reasons, which is now closed. Which is now closed. But the reason we loved that diner was for me, I really liked, I had this omelet that had green onion, um, they called it scallions, but same difference, green onion, bacon, and cheddar cheese and there was copious amounts of all of it. And oh my goodness, it was so good. And they sliced their home fries. They were so buttery though, and they were creamy, but, and they, and you have actually at, at diners often you have to ask if you want extra crispy. Yeah, so we've gotten crispy. to the point, any breakfast place will ask for a potatoes extra crispy, which they make sure, the kitchen makes sure they get that extra crisp side. So if you're not asking for that and your team crispy, be sure to ask. But you know what else Sage had? They had What's the that? best hollow French toast. Oh, yeah. So that's what Hubs would get. He well, loved. the kids would get. Too. Yeah, and the kids would get that too. So I'm just going to show you real quick. So when, you, when you're cooking, you can check your potatoes. But you can see they're really not brown yet. So we just want to let, that's why we just want to let it sit and let everyone get happy. Also, when you're doing home fries, it's best to be able to keep it all on one layer, which is, again, part of why I'm, I was doing the cubing of the potatoes, because that way... With that amount of potatoes, I could get them to all have one layer so that side can get super crispy. So you know what, another thing that the diners have yes. that they're known for is, um, is what? Is bakers. So like Ponzia, yes. for example. Great Ponzia pies. Is a, is a really good uh, diner, big diner down Absolutely. in Cherry Hill. Absolutely, and, um, yeah. They great, have great, great bakeries. wonderful baked goods. Although I'm a really fussy pie person, so I, I personally find that pot, that pies at diners, at least the ones I've tried, they use a little too much cornstarch or right. whatever they're using to thicken, which I'm not as big a fan. 
of, but, um, and I will tell you, some of you who follow me on Twitter, which by the way, if you're joining us and you're not following me on Twitter, uh, you'll want to do that because um, myself and all of my foodie friends, we post lots of pictures about what we're eating, cooking, fixing, trying, and um, one of the things uh, people know that follow me is I love like a, a really well done, no, I shouldn't say well done, a really perfect omelet, which is yellow, no brown, just perfectly cooked. However, I will say at diners, they don't tend to do it that way, but I know that. Like I know when I'm going in, what I'm going to get. And at the Sage Diner, it definitely had brown on it, but really with the bacon and the scallion and the cheese, I really didn't care. It was just so, it was so good, so homey. There's a lot of good ones. Yeah. Mangios is good. Melrose was, was great in, in, uh, in Philly. Yeah, I, I don't know so if I've ever uh, eaten at the Melrose Diner. Yeah, we used to eat there late at night. So I want to show you all just a little bit about what the pork roll looks like. Um, if you weren't at my um, Philly Benny's stream, which again, if you're interested in seeing pork roll on Eggs Benedict, you can check that out. But um, Archie's on. Oh, hey, Arch. You could just say, hey, Archie, then I would know hey, Archie. that Archie's on. Um, so and I'm going to open this Drew up. Tube's on also. Hello. Let's see. Oh, good morning, DrewTube2. Good morning, Archie and DrewTube. We have a wonderful crew here this morning. Hey, I do have a question. What have you all had for breakfast today? Because this is our breakfast and lunch. It's our brunch because we have not eaten yet. Just had coffee. Of course, we know, we, I miss, we know that I had coffee because I'm actually talking with you all now because I do tend to wake up a bit grumpy. I know it might be hard to realize. Husband doesn't think it's hard to realize. No, it's not but, hard to um, realize at all. But I do not wake up this way. Um, so this is the, so basically the Taylor ham is not really ham. It is a pork product and it is just so delicious and yummy. And you can see this one is thick. See that thick slice? You can get it thinner slice, but only one of these is going on our sandwich. So I got the thin slice. So actually Hubs, if you could get out a baggie, because I'm just going to be using two of these, that would be great. Yep. All right. So okay. Taylor ham. You gotta have Taylor ham, right? You have to have Taylor ham. Oh, this is what we want, friends. Uh-oh, uh -oh. lost that yep. one. Whoopsie. Run away. Yeah, but sorry about that, friends. And it's hot. So you see that? That's what you want. So now that that has happened, I'm gonna actually get my rubber spatula and get these flipped. And now we can get started on some of the other parts. So when you're doing home fries, you always wanna get them started first because they just take a little while, and you don't want to rush them. You want to give them plenty of time to get crisp. So now, I know that Archie makes a great crisp potato in the oven, but these home fries are traditionally done on the stove. So what Taylor, were you going to say, babe? Taylor Ham is uh, out of Trenton, New Jersey. Still there today. I, I didn't catch that. Taylor Ham? No, I didn't catch what you said after you said that. It's based out of it. Trenton, New Jersey. Gotcha. And still, still there today. All right, let me just flip these. I just want to make sure that a new side is giving, getting some of the love. So I'm just flipping these right now. You don't have to be so tedious, but I am going to be tedious because I know that this little bit of maneuvering is going to pay off in absolute yumminess. All right, so let me just get these flipped a little bit. And I can, let me see if y'all, yeah, it looks like y'all can see the beautiful brownness on the potatoes. Okay. You, know what the, you know what the nickname of pork roll is? Nope. Mystery meat. I did not know that. I've never heard it called that actually ever. Like I've truly never heard. I mean, I'm a, see, he's not a Jersey boy. I'm a Jersey girl. Never, ever heard it called that ever. I think he's dissing it. I think he's dissing it. Okay. So friends, so if you could take two of those <laughs> slices and put them in the fridge, cause I don't want that to go bad. Okay. And the, what I'm going to do right now, so I'm going to be using, I do not have a big old griddle. So I'm going to be multitasking some of my pans. So I don't know if you're like me and you don't have all the pans in the world and the big, the big old large griddle. So I'm going to get my Taylor ham started, my pork roll. We call it pork roll where, where I'm from. And so I'm going to get that started. Whoops, wrong burner. And I'm going to be using the same pan to do my eggs. So the first egg I'll be doing while these are finishing up is um, kind of the omelet egg that will just be like a nice fluffy egg. 
uh, to go on one of the sandwiches, and then the other eggs I'll be doing are the fried eggs. And I did almost forget, I knew I was almost gonna forget this because this pan will be multitasking, is first I'm gonna get my bread browned. So let me get some butter here. And let me get my bread sliced. So all I'm doing over here is slicing my potato roll and my Kaiser roll. So we're trying both. The Kaiser roll is a little bit denser. Oops, wait. Um, the potato roll is a little fluffier. So let me just get those sliced. And they're going to go right on top of the butter. Oh, let me just, I mean, you can just see the difference, though. So when you look at the Kaiser roll, you see how tight kind of that is and let me just kind of push on it you can see like like that's just a denser dough but this is more like a brioche the way they do this uh potato roll at Merzbacher's, you can just see like it's just it gives much more easily mm. has more it has bigger um, air pockets and those kinds of things so let's get this butter melted i might need to add a little more butter actually let me get my knife I want to make sure these have good flavor. There we go. There we go. Got some spreadage going there. Okay, so I'm going to get my rolls on. I just want to get them browned, and then we're going to let those hang out and just rest in the air fryer. And then as it gets closer, I will put some heat on the air fryer to kind of get them warmed up again and heat it up again. So but again, just trying to multitask and get these guys, get everything cooked kind of in succession and then bring it all together at the end. So there Catherine, you when you drop the, uh, the potato, yeah, she invoked the five second rule. I know. Did you invoke it? Cause I, cause I was on I, to, I did not. I was you, trying to be proper. And oh I, my goodness. But you were it. off screen. You totally could have normally, not been proper. Normally I would, I would go with the 10 second rule. Yes. Me too. All right, so friends, these are just looking fabulous. Like, I'm really happy, and I know they're going to continue to cook, but I don't want them to get burnt. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm actually going to put these on low and put, add my seasoning. Hi, DS. So, oh, hey, DS. So I'm going to add some smoked paprika. Again, you can add how much or little you like. And I'm going to be, oh, that smells so good. And I'm going to be adding a little bit of garlic powder. And I'm going to do some flipping just to get that all nicely mixed. But these, this is coming off so well. I will still keep an eye on it because if for some reason anything starts getting too done, I can always just turn off the heat and then turn it back on when we get a little closer. But these look, these look fabulous. So In fact, I'm kind of thinking I might need to just taste one just to see how it is. Yeah, shocking. Just to see. Whoops. So Matthew just said, I roll whole pork with my ingredients. Two teaspoons of butter, two teaspoons boneless pork roast rolled, or three pounds, I'm sorry. Boneless pork roast rolled, three pounds onion. peanut oil, half teaspoon. Wait a minute. I'm screwing this up. Three teaspoons. <laughs> Peanut oil, half teaspoon. I don't have my glasses on. I can't, I can't read it. This has a nice brown, by the way. So I'm going to go put this over to the air fryer. And again, we'll use this to warm it up in a little bit. And sorry, Matthew, for Hub's kind of yeah, um, I just, I can't, I don't, messing it up. I don't have my glasses on. I can't see it. Oh, my goodness. Go grab some glasses, babe. All right. Hold on. This does not have enough butter, so you can kind of see there's just this empty area, so I would not want that to happen to a roll. A roll should, if we are going to splurge and do this, then we are going to do it right. So I'm going to get that going and make sure that makes its way right in the middle there so it can make that roll happy. This one's starting to get brown, so this is almost there. All right, can I read this now? Please do. Now that I have, I'm wearing, I'm wearing Philly's uh, <laughs> reading glasses. So whole pork with my ingredients. Two tablespoons of butter, three pounds boneless pork, roast rolled, three tablespoons of peanut oil, a half teaspoon cinnamon, half teaspoon ginger, half teaspoon nutmeg, 
four oranges juiced, two cups of water, six bananas cut, and a partridge in a pear tree. That sounds delicious. That sounds really good. By the way, I'm going to try this little onion and potato. I wanted to wait so it wasn't so hot. Mmm. Mmm. How about your husband over here? Even with out, one second husband, even without the um, smoked paprika and garlic, just some salt and pepper, very good. I do think it needs a tad more salt. I feel like potatoes really need salt. Like they are definitely aching for it. So Hubs is glaring at me because I've not given him, let me get a fork, giving him his proper taste. Although I feel like the people, the person that does the work should get the taste, but what do y'all think about that? Um, so let me get this for you. It is very hot, so I highly recommend, I'm gonna turn this off actually because I just don't want those overdone because they're so perfect right now. And so I'm gonna turn it off and turn it back on to heat them. It is hot, so please wait, I friend. I will wait. Please wait. Meanwhile, um, oh, almost forgot about this. Okay, this is fine. It's got a little brown, but you know. Perfect. But it's not burnt, so there we go. So that's ready. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get our Taylor ham cooking on here. That is very Now, good. the thing with Taylor ham is it curls up. So what you'll do with a spatula is you will, once it starts curling up, is you're going to kind of cut it. Let me bring you over here a little bit more, friends. So, hubs, help yourself to peanuts. Whoops, that didn't do it. One second. Let me move you back just a tad. There we go. Okay. So see how it starts bubbling up like that? So what you need to do is you need to put little notches in it so it it's kind of rests and gets back down. Just gonna flip that a second. There we go. And these notches help it stay flat. Because we do want it to get yummy and get all that flavor. So we're gonna be doing this in the process. I'm gonna be getting this pork roll cooked, then I'm gonna do the um, the omelet fluffy egg style egg cooked, and then I'm going to be doing the fried egg style cooked. And then we're going to be topping everything with cheese, um, putting it together in the sandwiches, and we'll be giving it a try. But Hubs, do not let me forget, will you please, um, you, you'll come in and do a song and dance while I get pictures taken. So I will so appreciate that. Again, nobody wants to see that. Everyone wants to see that. Don't you all want to see him do a song and dance? I think you do. There's no songs, no dancing. Yes, how is Amy, Archie? How's she doing? When does school end, by the way? Um, Eugenia's on. In England. Oh, Eugenia, welcome to the stream. I'm just getting my pork roll cooked. Now, the meat is actually already cooked, so really I'm just getting it warmed and browned. So that's our goal for that. And then I'm going to be putting it in the microwave because that's my favorite warming part, my favorite warming drawer, as you all know. So we are actually almost there. We have our potatoes cooked and ready. Yeah, it needs a little bit more. Let me see who else we've got. The notches, yes, Catherine, the notches always. So did anyone tell me what they were eating this morning? What, what were y'all what were y'all eating this Somebody morning? Somebody did. Oh, Somebody well, said no, nothing, just coffee. Like us, kind of like us. I can't remember where that was. And if you didn't have breakfast, um, oh, what are you having said, for lunch? Matthew said biscuits with butter and jelly. That sounds Ooh, good. Ooh, nice. Drew Tube said coffee and more coffee. Coffee, yes. <laughs> coffee is is very much important. So these have nice color, and I'm going to just put this on a plate and keep it warm in my microwave. And then I actually am, because it's so important, I don't want my... Um, I'm just going to take this off, let it cool down a little bit. I don't want my eggs to burn on there and I want them to not stick because those are the ones I'm going to be doing like an omelet. So I'm going to take that off, let that cool down just a little bit. The pan feels a little bit hot. So Diaz asked if I could do a river dance. Oh, would you? I think that would be lovely. Who votes for a river dance? While this is cooling down, I'm just going to beat two eggs for my one sandwich. By the way, um, if you are new to the channel, welcome. And please uh, know that we do all sorts of food content. And if you enjoy this kind of content, please like and subscribe. 
We love the food community here. And also, be sure to find me on Twitter. All right, putting those eggshells away. Oh, I think he's being naughty again. Shocker. I know we all find it shocking. So I am not looking to make a French omelet here. I'm just looking to beat these up. This is all going to happen pretty quick in this pan. So I am actually going to um, get these salt and peppered now because you'll kind of see. This is just something, actually this method my sister taught me on one of these flat griddles. And I think you've, um, I don't know if I've done it on YouTube yet, but on Twitter I've shown um, these flat little omelets that I make on here that my sister taught me how to make, the technique. All right, so I'm gonna get this back on here and I wanna get some butter because we do not want anything sticking. So Eugenia says, as far as I know, pork roll is only available by mail order here. Oh. Same, same with good bologna. bologna. Okay. Bologna. Yeah. yeah, so for anyone not in the East Coast, it might be a little trickier to, to get. Okay, so friends, this is all going to happen fast. I'm going to get my special spatula that helps me with this. Forgot to get that out. This is very helpful, this one. And all we're going to do now is I'm going to pour it all around. I'm going to let it kind of go to the edges. My goal is for this all to cook pretty quick, and then I'm going to fold it up. Well, that is pretty cool, actually. Mm -hmm. Your wife does so many cool things, baby. Wow. I'm just trying to spread some of this uncooked egg to this one hole. Not that it matters, because we are going to be putting this together in quarters, but you can see how quickly this um, cooks, which what I like about it then is it keeps it fluffy. So then what I'm going to be doing is, and it doesn't have to look perfect, let me see, this one's going to help me out, is then I'm just going to be flipping this over like that. And then I'm going to just, I'm trying to get kind of the bun size, if that makes sense. Whoops, I could have done that a little better. Oh dear, there we go. Well, it's kind of big, but that works. We'll tidy up that just a little bit. There we go, and that's all she wrote. So you can see super quick. I'm gonna also get this on a plate to put in the microwave hubs. You could help me out with that. Eugenia said similar to the Japanese omelet method. Oh yes, yes. And it makes a great omelet when you just roll it up. It just makes it delicious. This is gonna be quite the egg <laughs> on the sandwich. So one of the things I'm gonna do with this, cause it's gonna hang out, is I'm gonna put my, my Amer one second. I'm gonna, can you get me a slice of American? No, actually I'm bringing all the cheese. I'm making the cheese decisions. So I'm actually gonna be putting my American cheese on there too, so I can kind of get happy. I'm gonna, you know what, we are, we are not trying to save calories today. So put that in there and put um, one of these on each of the pork roll too, cause we'll have a two slicer. Okay. All right, so next up is just our fried eggs. So since we're getting close, I'm gonna turn my heat back up on my potatoes. Back it on, yep. Okay, and I'm keep my cheese close. And we're gonna be putting a little more butter. And I'm gonna be frying some eggs. There we go. This is a great griddle. I've had this for years and, you know, my only thing as we know with nonstick is to not um, add spray to it because then it does tend to gum it up. Let me get this a little bit warmer because I want my eggs to cook up nice and quick. I'm going to get my bread into the air fryer. I'm not turning it on yet, but that way it's good to go for when I'm ready to turn it on. Okay, let's see how these are. I think we're good. Anything I'm missing on the chat, babe? Uh, let me get back to it. Let's see. Okay. So um, Dia said, you said this yummy dish takes you back to your Jersey days? Yes, yes. So Taylor pork roll, um, Taylor ham or pork roll is just something that you see all through um, the Jersey diners and actually sandwich shops that also serve breakfast. And Dia's probably knows that. Yeah, you, were you familiar with it, Dia's? Just doing some fried eggs. I'm also, I am going to actually break the yolk a little bit because I don't want it to be too runny. I want some runny, but I don't want it to be crazy. Like, so I'm just giving a gentle break. 
just to expand that a little bit. There we go. No, he said no. Oh, all right. Okay. Mm. I didn't realize that. Yes. All right. So I'm giving these a quick shake. Oh my gosh. Do these not look fabulous? Those look absolutely delicious. I'm doing some salt and pepper here. Of course, you know, you could fix your eggs how you want. Friends, if you were having this sandwich, would you prefer the fried eggs or the kind of the soft eggs, this kind of the omelette approach? I'm curious about that. I'm going to break that just a little bit more, make sure that doesn't get stay too runny. I'm just going to do a little flippage. There we go. Nice. And then we're going to be we're going to be soon. So since we're going to be soon, I'm actually going to turn that heat down on there and I'm going to move you all here so that we can get ready for the assembly. All right. Let me see make sure you can see everything. Whoops. There we go. You I think that's good. Nope, I think you're good. Okay. All right, I'm going to tidy up a little bit. Let those finish cooking and we are ready to go. So put this the cheese away. Yeah, was, this was the cheese. Yep. Yeah, that was the Kaiser roll. Oh, I should have had you use this bag. Oh, I was, that was the, right. for the, um, the rest of the pork roll. So we're going to tidy up. I'm actually going to be assembling them here. Oh, let me get the, the bread warming. Get that going. Give this a shake. Oh, my goodness. So I was wondering what is everyone's favorite breakfast? So like at the diner, Hub's favorite uh, breakfast was to get the challah French toast, which I haven't made on stream yet, but that was his, is his favorite way to have French toast is one that's made with challah bread. So, and with a real eggy custardy um, dip that just really makes the whole thing shine, even without any accoutrements, right? It's just kind of your um, French toast with some butter and some- and Good that's, syrup. That's and actually, need. at the um, diners, you don't get good syrup. So just the corn syrup <laughs> or whatever, the flavored syrups that we get. So right. Catherine said definitely the fried egg, but I'd never say no to the scramble. <laughs> All right. So the cheese. Oh, I do need some cheese for my fried eggs, babe. Oh. I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking when you said put it away. Okay, so I'm gonna get a piece of cheese to go between my eggs. All right. Actually to go on top. I think I'm gonna have them kind of. Good now? Yep. So I'm just putting my eggs on top of each other. And I'm going to let them hang out. I'm gonna get my other things out here. And let it all warm up on this while we're waiting. And things are almost ready. We're almost there. Okay. So let that hang out on what was. Okay, these are done. I'm gonna just see, I'm just shifting all of my warm over. There we go. That's good to go. Everything's good to go. Everything's off. We just have some remnant heat that's going to help keep everything warm there. And our buns, I think, they are set. We are good to go. Okay, so I'm going to assemble right... Whoops, I don't know what I just did. I'm going to assemble here. Diaz said, I love all the American breakfast. Eggs, toast, pancakes, or French toast, waffles, home fries, and bacon sausage and a cup of OJ. Then he said, I fancy a good British breakfast. Uh, yes, I've never had a proper British breakfast, by the way. So friends, um, as we put this together, I'm going to be putting the pork roll down on the bottom. And Archie said that Amy is currently eating her roast dinner with her friend Jack. So Phil's stream and myself have to take a back seat today. Totally understand. <laughs> Absolutely. So I'm going to actually put the fried egg on the potato roll because it's just a little larger and I'm worried about the squish factor with, um, you know, with this. And I'm going to change my mind. I'm sorry. I've obviously I've washed my hands, but I'm going to actually put the egg down first 
and then the pork roll on top on this one. We're gonna kind of switch it up a couple different ways. So let me just show you what we've done here. Now that I'm greasy, I'm gonna rewash my hands. Okay, so we have on the one side, let me show you. Okay, so on the one side here, we have a potato roll instead of the brioche roll um, with the Taylor pork ham, cheese, two eggs and cheese. Here we have the Kaiser roll with the egg omelet e thing. Again, just a way to cook the eggs to keep them together with some cheese and then the Taylor ham, the pork roll, in other words, and the American cheese. And then we're gonna top it. go there we go and then I'm going to get these cut before we get our picture I mean after we get before we get our picture because I think the inside is what makes these so good all right so I'm gonna do this one first give it a cut and then we'll plate up actually hubs would you be able to put um, home fries on each of our plates please but leaving make sure you have plenty of room for the sandwiches yep so I'm using a serrated knife because I'm already worried about things like <laughs> scooching out the middle. So let me just move my egg over a little bit. Okay. There we go. The serrated really helps cut through without it squishing all out. Oh my gosh, these look so good. Okay, let me show y'all. <gasps> oh my gosh. Wow. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. You got to see the inside of this before I take the pick. And just take this one crumb out. Look at this. Look at that. So you can see all the layers. And you can see even with the egg here now, I'm not going to lie, I wish that egg was dripping just a little bit, but it's not light yellow. So it's still really jammy inside. Just delicious. So the difference in the breads, the difference in the egg style, absolutely fabulous. So I'm, Tubbs is gonna do his song and dance now, maybe the Irish jig, and I'm gonna get a quick pick of this. Actually, I'm just gonna sit here and nibble on the potatoes. How are the potatoes? Do they need any more salt? I don't think I put more salt on them. Ooh, Do they hot. need more salt, babe? Hun? Hold on. <laughs> I just torched my yeah, I'm gonna put a little salt on them. You know what, I'm so surprised you torched yourself. I just find that you never do such a thing. Like, that's just so unlike you, babe. Man, those are hot. Friends, don't you think that's so unlike Hubs to like? So I think we're gonna go directly to the emergency room after this, after this meal. Because? Pork roll, egg, cheese. Oh. Just like Hubs to bring Be the Debbie Downer Sorry. with this. Oh my goodness. <laughs> And I would love to say that I'm surprised, but you all know that I'm not surprised because he kind of does this each time. Don't you, babe? I do. I do. <laughs> all right. So we're ready to plate up. So you have the potatoes all set. Yep. Yes. All they're right. set. Thank you. And they're salted. Will you, will you bring the, um, the forks and napkins? All right. So I'm going to give you that. Okay. I'm going to do this. Oh my goodness. I'm just trying to figure out like how I might want to have this look. I think I'm going to have to take one more picture. I'm so sorry, my love. But because um, I love the idea of both sandwiches on a plate. I got it. Thank well, you. Okay. Yeah, there you go. So what are you most excited to try? Which, which version are you excited to try, babe? So I think I'm actually, and normally I wouldn't say this, but I think it's the Kaiser roll. Oh. Just because I think that's a little bit more traditional, but yeah. I guess, I think it is, if I remember, but, um, but, oh, the other one's really soft. <laughs> yeah, so that's, wow. so I will say, maybe, maybe I, I'm going to change my mind. I actually am a bit, and you know this about me, I'm a bit of a soft roll freak. Yep. So I, I love, so Arch, you know, I love me a pretzel, but there is a thing with the pretzel rolls like around our country. And I'm not a pretzel roll fan because it's quite a firm roll. And I find if you're doing a hamburger or anything and you've got too firm a roll, it just squishes everything out. So I am definitely 
team brioche or um, yeah, but, like this potato roll. I mean, but it's a little firmer, but it's not. I mean, it's, True. it's still and very it helped, soft. And it actually helped right. um, adding the heat. Yep. Because Kaiser rolls can feel a little dense if you don't like heat them up. All right, which one are you going to eat first? Oh, I'm definitely trying this. I'm All getting right. the perfect bite of these eggs. They go on first. Okay, mm -hmm. going in. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm. The saltiness of the... And the creaminess of the, of the cheese. Yeah. It is a definite the salt of the high. Egg. <laughs> and the richness of the egg, it just goes together. It is so good. Wonderfully. And I love the gushy roll. So like this would be like a brioche roll. Yeah. So delicious. Wow, that's really good. Mmm. Mmm. I am in such good eggy happiness right now. And that is so good. And the pork roll, it just adds like this rich porky flavor. And look, it might be processed meat. It's really but good. But it's processed well. <laughs> and I will say, really well. you know, not for nothing, there's a lot of processing going on here. And this is not necessarily for the daily diet, but for the splurge, yes. And because, you know, American cheese is a processed cheese, right? But it is creamy. Nothing gives you that bite of American, the creaminess. You ready? Yep. Going in. Mmm. 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 Interesting. You wouldn't think there'd be much of a difference, but there's, there's a, quite there's a, yeah, there's a, a big difference. huge difference. So I like the fried egg better. See, I actually... I felt like in this sandwich, I could taste everything better. Like everything stood out on its own. In this sandwich, it kind of all goes together in a marriage. This one, they're kind of staying single, but in the best of ways. Does that make sense? They're both great, but I, for me, I would, I would like you the You would do that one. Yeah, and yep. I, you know what I want to do? I should have done it really today, is I want to do one of the eggs omelette wise and then one egg fried. I think you'd get the best of both worlds. Yeah. So if you all make it, that would be my recommendation. I would. But I... Since the egg wasn't overcooked, since it was just, it got just yellow, um, it really is tender and yummy. And there is something very eggy about a scramble, right? About omelets. Like, it just gives you a different eggy experience. And you all know I love yolks. But, um, mm. but somehow it, it, like, kind of kept its identity better this way. And I actually like the Kaiser roll because this one just, this... Kaisers are, can all kind of be a little different. This one just felt very firm that I got yep. from a local market. Um, it almost reminds me of a hoagie because a Kaiser is very similar. Yeah, a little bit. To uh, like hoagie rolls because, in fact, at one of the places um, called Donkeys in Camden for cheesesteaks, they serve their cheesesteaks on Kaiser rolls. Yeah, and it's Fun known fact. as a very good, good cheesesteak. So it's funny because I think mm. you like, I mean, I like both. But I love both. You went in thinking you were going to like this mm -hmm. more. And I was vice versa. And, and, I taste uh, the pork roll more in that. I don't know why. I, why would I yeah, taste the pork I don't know. roll in that? But I think we, we switched. So now it's potato time. Potatoes are great. Mmm. Mmm. This is a good one. Look how brown that, I don't know if you can see. And how and then, brown that is. Very good. Oh, yum. And the, and the, om I'm not the omelets, the onions. Look how nicely browned they got. Again, if that's not your thing, then then fry just, up your omelets do it. Yeah. and take them out and then add them at the end. There's many people that do that. But me, the, I, I love brown bits. The whole brown yeah. situation is fabulous. Oh, and I didn't get a chance to tell you all. Um, so as a young girl, to me, American cheese was white. Like, that's all I ever knew. And I think I mentioned this the last time we were on the Philly Bennies is when we moved to Ohio. It was really hard to find white American cheese, and I wouldn't eat it. Yellow. I wouldn't eat it. I swore to God it tasted different, which I'm sure it did not. But like, it's just funny when you grow up with a certain expectation. Then when when you have different, you're like, well, wait, that must taste different. Oh, it's so good. It's a diet coke, diet coke Archie, and there is no oh, gin, there is no gin in I the diet coke. I forgot about y'all, friends. So sorry. I mean, I didn't forget about y'all. I knew y'all were there, but um. Let's, oh, a muffalata is amazing. Oh, uh, muffalata is good. Yes. This is so delicious. This is so good. I, so for a splurge, I highly recommend it. Um, DS, have you, I know you hadn't heard of uh, pork roll, but have you seen it at all in your stores? Like, have you ever noticed that? It would be by, like, the, um, the Canadian ham and things like that. And by the way, 
A great substitute for this would be Canadian ham. You could substitute um, I, I, a bologna, you know, that you could substitute. It sure. would, again, be a little different flavor. You could even substitute Spam, although I'm not a Spam fan, personally, no offense, Spam. Um, but you could, like it has the same kind of yeah. idea. Same sort so of there's, if you salty can't get pork meat. roll, there's definitely things you could substitute. And you know, Canadian ham would be an easy, I think most people can it's find. Like an, it's like an egg McMuffin, right? Let, but then it's like an egg McMuffin, but it's a little bit, it's just a little bit better than at McDonald's. So um, yes, this was delicious. This is, and, I, and we are gonna finish eating off camera, but thank you all. I had a delightful time with all of you. I appreciate DS and Archie and Catherine and Eugenia and Matthew and- You said um, Catherine? I said Eugenia? Catherine, Eugenia, I said Eugenia. And I said Matthew, I think that was it. And of course, Archie, make sure you give Amy a high. Oh, and um, um, Sam, who is Shannon. So Shannon, I'm so yep. glad you had popped on. And for anyone Drew Tube. else, uh, and Drew Tube, thank you for popping on. And for anyone else watching from afar, thank you for your support. We appreciate it. Next coming up is Friday. And Friday, I am making DS. I'm making DS's recipe for mm. falafel. So um, DS has really? sent me a when are you um, doing that? Friday when during the day. Okay. So, yes. Yeah, so I have I have a day off. Really? It's Memorial Day weekend. And you know my school has like extra days always <laughs> on the holiday weekend. So, so anyways, it's Memorial Day weekend here. So the huh. Friday stream will be at lunchtime, and um, I mean it'll be a little earlier because I do think of the process. And so DS, I'm making your falafel recipe. I'm so excited with tahini sauce, and I actually. FYI, and I am embarrassed to say first time buying dried chickpeas because I always get my chickpeas from a can, but I know that's a no-no. So I have these and I'm gonna do an overnight soak um, the mm. night before for the falafel. So they'll be all ready to go. Super excited to make Very it. Cool. I'm a little worried about the um, food processor because we saw the food processor issue. So I hope mm. it can hold up just long enough for the falafel. But yeah, so that will be on Friday. So homemade falafel. Um, recipe courtesy of DS, so I'm super excited about it. Excellent. Yes, absolutely. And let's see. Uh... <laughs> He's like, I smelled something coming through my window. Thought it was you. It smells yummy. Um, oh wait. Oh, I'm. Oh wait. Okay, that was a later yep. one. Whoa, the second. Awesome. Wonderful. So yes. Yeah, so everyone, thank you for your support. And until we eat again, have a great week, friends. See you guys.